But the thing is, Seagal was a legit Aikido specialist. Steven Seagal is not a fighter. It's on right now. guy seemed kind of silly you forget like he had a real legit history with Aikido he was the first American to ever, ever teach at a dojo in Japan yeah. speaks fluent Japanese and he's a legitimate Aikido master like 100% absolute legitimate Aikido master the thing is Aikido is just not something that translates perfectly to uh, to MMA of course, that's always the argument, and there's certain techniques you're not even allowed to utilize anyway, like small joint manipulation and some other stuff, but I do believe somebody trained can use the principles from Aikido, but you don't want to just limit yourself to one style regardless. He is 100% legit, and Aikido's not the best martial art for self-defense. It's just not, yeah. but it has its applications, and in its applications, he's a master at it, much like... Jiu-Jitsu has its applications, but it's not great for kickboxing, right? Yeah. Uh, Taekwondo has its applications, but it doesn't work if you kick the legs and punch the face. Yeah. But if you learn how to do it, those techniques can apply if you know all the other stuff. Well, if you know all the other stuff, this motherfucker has some real shit. But not only that, people do forget that Steven Skull actually started with karate. And he is heavily trained in kung fu. So the karate kind of paralleled the Aikido training. I believe the kung fu did as well, and he talks about that. Great interview he actually did with uh, Scott Atkins on The Art of Action. He said, hey, do you know karate? I said, where are you from? And he said, I'm from Japan. He said, I'm from Okinawa. I said, uh, do you know karate? And he said, yes, I do. Why do you ask? <laughs> and I said, uh, I said, I just, this is something I want to devote my life to. You would have to be so good at all the other stuff that you could utilize this. I think people just associate Steven Skull as the Aikido guy because that's basically what he was known for in those films. Because you already had guys like John claude Van Damme and Chuck Norris doing karate in movies. You had Bruce Lee doing Kung Fu. We've already seen that Seagull wanted to bring something new to the screen. And he really blew things wide open with movies like Above the Law. I mean, even Michael Jai White gives him credit for stuff like that. I was a big fan of the first movies that he had done. I thought that was something that he really blew it wide open. Steven's, you know, he's, he's an entertainer. And I look at some of the stuff uh, and I, I can understand he's, he's selling a product. And then from Aikido, I started going into jujitsu and sword. And I studied a lot of sword. It sounds like you're on a quest to just become the best martial artist that you could possibly be and, and trying to seek out the best possible trainers that you could possibly find. That is exactly what I was doing. And when I got older in Japan, I actually went into Hong Kong to study some Kung Fu there and I went into Taiwan to study some Tai Chi there. So I did that kind of thing. I was always going around trying to find the greatest master. Okay, so we know Steven Seagal has a very rich history in martial arts, very legit. And it's not just Aikido. He's pretty well-rounded. But now let's look into Michael Jai White. Michael Jai White is Michael Jai White. Michael Jai White. absolutely legit. At Michael Jai White broke the chain on the heavy bag at Legends Gym in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. He asked Eddie Bravo, or Eddie Bravo rather, asked him to demonstrate uh, the way he does a sidekick. This dude does a sidekick, a hopping sidekick, slams it into the bag. The bag goes katink against the chain Damn. and the chain snaps. That's real? A hundred percent real. We were laughing. He even did like a thing with Kimbo. They were working on a movie together uh. and he was explaining something to Kimbo about telegraphing things. And Kimbo was, you could tell Kimbo was like, oh shit. It wasn't just like an actor was fucking around. Yeah. It was like, oh, this guy's legit. There's of course a little bit of controversy related to that. I know Mike Perry, Doing really good in the BKFC right now. Um, was a pretty good UFC fighter, but he's he's dominating in a bare knuckle boxing. Recently, uh, destroyed Luke Rockhold. But anyway, I know Mike Perry got into like a big beef with uh, Michael Jai White. I see what his skill set looks like. He he needs help. Over the whole story related to Kim, the late Kimbo Slice, as far as like whether Michael Jai White can actually teach Kimbo Slice something. Kimbo, who of course is a real fighter. And then, of course, there's controversy with Steven Seagal's front kick that he taught Leota Machida and Anderson Silva, which I don't know if Anderson Silva was just joking and playing around and giving Seagal credit. But Leota Machida still claims that, yeah, what Seagal showed him actually does help. So as far as Steven Seagal and Michael Jai White showing things and, and training with UFC fighters, 
there's controversy related to it, though I do think they both probably showed these uh, fighters something that was worthwhile. I don't doubt that. It's just something that I did to spend time and try to encourage and help and bring some kind of joy or anything I could do. Steven Seagal could not teach Anderson a front kick that he can't do himself. Come on. Well, I have eight black belts now. So no, are you serious? Mm -hmm. Eight? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been, I've been, you know, thus the age, I've been doing it for a long time. <laughs> so the background and history on both of the men, Seagal and Michael Jai White, very impressive, great history, great background, very skilled. I would give the edge to Steven Seagal for the pure mastery of Aikido in moving to Asia, moving to Japan, training with the masters, seeking them out. Now, of course, Michael Jai White did that too. Back in the 90s, he sought out Bill Superfoot Wallace, a bunch of other fighters. I've done that since I was a kid. Very cool stuff. Very great history. But if you were to open a school, which Steven Seagal did, by the way, and he also taught um, in Japan. So as far as like what I think is a more impressive martial arts background in history, I give it to Seagal for being the first Westerner to teach in Japan and then opening up schools in Southern California. And his level of mastery, at least in Aikido, is so much higher, in my opinion, than Michael Jai White's level of mastery would be in any of the arts that he's trained in. That's bullshit. Now, as far as fitness goes, because strength, power, endurance, physical attributes, it's going to help you be a better martial artist. I mean, Bruce Lee knew that back in the day. Um, it's not really a contest between Michael Jai White and Steven Skull. I mean, Michael Jai White still looks phenomenal, especially given his age, but he was really fit his entire life, his entire career pretty much since he started in the movies and obviously well before that. Steven Seagal, um, not really a gym guy, man. And I don't know how his diet is or if he has like a thyroid issue, but he's grown over time, not muscle growth. So obviously you have to give this uh, category to Michael Jai White. Now, as far as like overall coolness goes, that's obviously going to be subjective. I think a lot of people will say Steven Skull's got a lot of charisma, a lot of screen presence, which is true, which is why his movies were so good back in the day and he became a huge movie star. So there's a lot of variables and factors related to that. But his on-screen presence, like even Van Damme said in an interview that seagull has got something, like he really did. He's just very natural. He's very smooth. He's got that nice, you know, mellow, relaxed voice. Whereas Michael Jai White, he's a little bit different. He's he's a really, like, super alpha. He's got that, that really deep voice. And when he's acting, it doesn't quite sound as natural, in my opinion. Don't worry about Hillary. I'll take good care of her. It doesn't sound that natural, man. I, 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 I pr actually prefer just his normal voice, which, you know, when he's in interviews, sometimes he'll even go to that deep mode. But then... It'll be normal Michael Jai White, and that's, um, it probably depends on the character he plays in film, but I think he should just play more his normal voice, honestly. So, and that's what Steven Seagal does uh, in a lot of his earlier films. He just played Seagal with his very calm, cool voice, right? And I'll tell you why. So overall coolness, I would give it to Seagal, even though he did wear some interesting outfits. <laughs> he had a lot of different styles, right? Ponytail was interesting, but... Overall coolness, I would give the edge to Seagull. Kill her, kill her. I don't mind if you kill her, you know, because I don't know her at all. Ah, such a cool guy. Now, of course, this kind of ties into the movies as well. And when I talked about, like, the voice, Seagull started doing more accents, right? I don't think that worked in a lot of those films from, like, the last 20 years. I don't know why he did that, but I don't think that quite worked. But the quality of the films obviously went downhill. So if you talk about the overall filmography, you have to give it to Seagull. He had amazing co-stars, amazing directors like Andrew Davis, for example. Look at a film like Under Siege and co-starring with Tommy Lee Jones and uh, who's that psychotic blonde dude? Um, Do I look like I need a psychological evaluation? Not at all. Yeah, Gary Busey. So... Seagull's early body of work alone cements it. He had like a good 10-year run, 88 to 98. But really his first four films really kicked it off, and that was before Under Siege, right? So, yeah. I mean, Michael Jai White just, he has not been in any film that can compare to any of those. He did have a really good start, though. You know, he did the Mike Tyson straight-to-TV uh, movie. 
he did Spawn, that that guy, the theatrical release. He starred opposite Van Damme in uh, Universal Soldier The Return. He starred opposite Seagull in Exit Wound. So he got some pretty good roles. But see, the issue is that, and this obviously happened to Seagull and Van Damme and Stallone and Arnold and all those guys were coming into 2000. The movies were just getting lower budget and the quality was going down and all those guys were going straight to video. So of course... Michael Jai White was never able to like maintain himself being in like theatrical release movies. So the bulk of his career is in that straight to video section where I would say over the last 20 years, his films in general are actually better than Seagull's over the last 20 years. But the thing is, the 10 years prior to that, and just you could even just count four films that Seagull did. That alone, if Skull didn't do anything else, I mean, his legacy is cemented and his filmography is always going to be better than Michael Jai White. So you got to give it to Seagull. There's no question about like the actual movies. But like I mentioned, over the last 20 years, if, if that's all we're counting, you know, last 20 years, then, then Michael Jai White would win. Because as bad as I think uh, Welcome to Sun Death is, for example, which I made a video about, it's still better than pretty much what the goal done in like the last 20 years can i laugh in your face now as far as an actual fight between the guys me taking pride in hurting Sagal, i find no gratification in that do i think michael is a tough guy no do i think he's a martial artist no they don't see eye to eye it's pure speculation because we don't really have anything to basically judge, at least a competitive fight on. And obviously there's a big difference between a sport fight with rules and an actual street fight. But as far as like a competitive fight... There's a big difference between people that make the walk, get in a ring in a cage, train for uh -huh. that specifically, and fight in an MMA bout. Which is true because you could really only speculate from sparring. We know Michael Jai White, uh, at least there's good indication actually does spar. Steven Seagal, he puts on a lot of demonstrations. Um, Michael Jai White puts on demonstrations as well. I don't know how much actual sparring Seagal has. Michael Jai White has some, obviously. But if it were a sport fight, I'll tell you why you would probably have to give the edge to Michael Jai White, simply because he's the better conditioned athlete. He's going to have better endurance. He's going to be able to go the distance. I don't think Steven Seagal at least in this state, would really do that great in a, uh, a sports competition. Like, he might. He might be able to finish it very quickly, but, you know, under specific rules with specific techniques that are banned, Steven Skull is going to be very limited, plus the physical capability of him. Come on. Now, if you're actually talking about the street, I actually think Seagull could take him, man. I think Seagull could take a lot of people in the street just because he's got a different mindset and philosophy. I don't care who you are. You're dead. Yeah. And ways of doing things and obviously different techniques. And um, yes, it's not a dig on Michael J. White. I just think Seagull could beat a lot of people in the street. If I have to fight, I don't care about the law. Yeah. I care about ending it quick. And Michael J. White, he would actually do pretty damn good in the sports competition. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments, obviously. Uh, who's got it, Seagull or Michael J. White and in what category?